morning everyone this video we are going to introduce the liver the liver is in the abdominal region just below the diaphragm it's in the right side of the body and the liver meridian the liver connects with the gallbladder the orifice of the liver is the eyes and the function main function of, of the liver the liver has two has two main functions the first is the liver regulates the qi or the liver governs the flow of qi or governs the qi regulation the second is that the liver stores blood so we're going to introduce one by one and here the liver governs the qi regulation here don't confuse with the function of, of the lung the lung governs the qi when the lung governs the qi and the regulation of the qi so it's, it's very similar the lung governs the material of qi or the objects of qi and then the movement of qi is governed by the liver so actually the liver's movement all the qi the lungs dispersing and descending function which is moving outwards and outwards and descending moving downwards and inwards this kind of function in order to perform well it has to have the, the function from the liver because the liver governs the flow of qi, the regulation. So here you need to understand well the difference between the, the lung and the liver. So we're going to discuss the first. The liver governs the flow of qi, regulating the qi movements. So that's the function in terms of qi movements, regulating the smooth flow of blood and water metabolism. So as you can see here, regulating qi movements and the regulating the flow of blood and water metabolism, promoting digestive functions of spleen and stomach, regulations of emotions, promoting the reproduction in humans. These four aspects are actually the results of qi movements. That's why we conclude that the liver has the function of regulating qi movements. Why the, the, the flow of blood and water metabolism is the result of qi movements? Actually, we have Describe. We have already explained similar situation in the lung function, in the spleen function, when they governs the transportation and transformation or the waterways. That's because the the flow of blood, even in the heart function, the flow of the blood, the circulation of the blood, the flow of water metabolism it needs the qi to push them which is yang so for poor blood circulation which we said blood stasis so the blood stop stopped or the blood slowed down this poor circulation in this kind of treatments in this kind of diseases the treatments is very important to promote the liver function because we need to promote the qi to move to move the blood. But how to promote the qi to move the blood? Then this function comes from the function of the liver. That's why we use the medicine or acupuncture point to stimulate the liver to improve the liver function 
That's how to improve the qi movement to treat the blood stasis or water metabolism. The water metabolism, that's one very typical or very obvious examples that, such as edema. For edema, patient with edema, we've got many kinds of different treatments. There's one kind of treatment that's to improve the qi or tonify qi to reduce the edema. Of which qi we're going to tonify or why we can tonify the qi to reduce the edema. That's because the edema, the water, stay, stays in certain parts of the body which is considered as abnormal and then the qi movement can help to reduce the edema. So the regulating the smooth flow of the blood and water metabolism is the result of qi movement. And also for the smooth flow of blood for some diseases we have mentioned the edema or some bleeding some bleeding it can be the excess qi movement so if the, the qi move too much the excess qi movement can cause bleeding because the qi is supposed to push the blood within the vessels but in this case the qi push the blood, promote the blood move very fast and then move out of the vessel which we can see as, as, as the symptoms of bleeding so in this kind of diseases we also can regulate the qi which we regulate the, the, the liver function But when we talk about the, the bleeding, especially this kind of bleeding, if it happens in the lower part of our body, what what else we should focus on? Is there any other organs that we have mentioned that we should focus on? Or qi flow? We still remember when we discussed the, the spleen. The spleen governs blood in the vessel. So the spleen controls the controls the blood in the vessels. So for those kinds of bleeding, you need to think about these two organs. One is the spleen, one is the liver. You need to recover the function of the spleen function to control blood within vessels. Also need you need to recover the liver function. To regulate the qi movement, not too much, not too or too little or less. So it should be in in the middle. That's all what we talk about balance. The second is promoting digestive functions of the spleen and stomach. So when we Study the spleen, it's very spleen we have mentioned in the previous video. That's the spleen, the function is to transport and transformate the transportation and transformation of the food and water or body fluid. So, this function, the spleen, I said that the spleen receive the spleen and stomach receive the food from the mouth from the food and water from the food we eat so that it calls acquired which we eat from the food and then this these food in the spleen and stomach function they can chan transport and also trans transform these foods into qi which we can use and this kind of qi will disperse will be transported to lung and then the lung can disperse the qi to all over the body and this kind of qi can be defensive qi can be nutrition qi 
also can be any other kinds of qi, right? Because according to their function. But in this in this process, what receives the qi? What transports the the qi to the lung? How does the qi from the spleen transport to the lung? So there's one qi to move the qi from the spleen to the lung, and then the the dispersing function of the lung also need the qi movements, and these are all qi movements. As you can see here, the liver actually controls or connects all kind all kinds of qi movements in the body. So if the qi movements in the spleen and stomach doesn't function well, for instance, if the qi movements specifically for this function, promoting digestive function of the spleen and stomach, if not enough or is weak this function, then patient will suffer from the like poor appetite or extending abdomen or stomach ache. Or sometimes the patient will have bitter taste in the mouth in the mouth. If the qi movement moves too much for this symptom, for, for this function, the digestive function, so our food from the mouth to the stomach to and then into the intestines until become the waste from the anus out of the body. This process needs certain time to stay in the in the body. And this this certain procedures is in charge by the qi movement because who push all stuff moving downwards is the qi movement. If the qi moves too fast, then the patient will have diarrhea. If the qi moves too slow, the patient will have constipation. So as you can see, these symptoms are all related to digestive function of the spleen and stomach and these are actually due to the irregular qi movement. The third is the regulation of emotion. When we actually we haven't mentioned we when we mentioned when we studied the etiology, the etiology of Chinese medicine and acupuncture in in future, we will introduce the emotion, different emotions such as joy, anger, worry, fear, fright, sorrow. So these different emotions they're going to affect the qi movements, such as anger. Anger will move the qi upwards. So when you feel angry. These are actually the, the phenomena we can see from our from, from, from our daily life. If someone's angry, someone they feel very angry, what's the most common symptoms? Or oh, when you feel angry, you should have the experience of feeling angry. What do you feel? You feel hot in your head. That kind of a hot hot feeling. Sometimes if you some patients they also not the patient, some people they also have the like a red face when they feel angry. You see all these kinds of symptoms, the hot feeling in your head, or sometimes after if they feel angry, some people will feel headache. Or even worse, in some condition, people have stroke after when they feel angry. Why all these diseases or symptoms happen after angry? That's because this emotion, anger, will move the qi upwards. So the qi, when the qi, when excess qi move upwards, then we will feel hot in the head or headache. This kind of a headache, it's, it's, the patient will tell you that they can feel a kind of distending feeling in the head. 
but also due to the excess qi move to the head. That's the irregular qi movements due to the emotions. And there's another example that if you, that's quite common if, if the dogs in your house, if the dog feel fear or if someone scare the dog, what, the, what does the dog do normally? So you, you might have seen the experience Especially if you go to like SACP, SPCA, those kinds of places. I don't know if you have been to there or not. If you, you haven't, you can find some chance to go there. You will see the dogs, especially the dog that was abandoned. When, just, when, when they just arrived there, they feel nervous. In that condition, what they what they will do, the, those dogs, they stay in the corner, and they 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 are scary and they they were scared easily. The very loud noise can scare them, or even some people walk around, they also will be scared, and then after they walk away. You can see on the on the floor where they light first. Sometimes there will be, be some urine there. So here, why the dogs when they feel fear, they will lost the control of urination. That's the also due to the emotion. The fear, the emotion of the fear can move the qi downwards. These are the common symptoms, common signs in our daily life. Although I gave you the example from the animals, but this also happens in human beings. For instance, if you go to the gold reef city, if you play on the rides, gold reef city, the right is not very high, but in some other areas, you go very high rides. And some people they scare they scare and they are frightened there. Sometimes you can see from the news that's what they report that when people feel frightened, they lost the control of urine. And sometimes even stool. But you see why? For fear they will lost the control of urine and stool. Move and something moving upwards, which is the urine and stool. That's because of the emotion, the, the emotion of the fear can cause qi move downwards. So these are abnormal movements of qi in these, in our regular emotion or healthy emotions. Thus, we need the regular qi movements which is from the liver that's also why if the liver the liver problem the patient always feel depressed or always have emotional problems that's because the liver lose, loses the control the regulation of move, emotions the fun, lose this function and then once they lose this function, our emotions will change will be changed. That's that's also exactly why in a sick condition the emotion will change. We we have so quite a few actually quite a, quite a lot stroke patients. Stroke patients and after stroke, after they lying in the bed for like one month or two months. During the three months, we will find that the patient, sometimes their family will tell you that the patient, even the personality change a lot, change a lot. Someone from very active to very negative, very positive to very negative. And someone feel depressed. 
why did the stroke the stroke is something happens in the brain why the diseases will cause these emotions it's because after stroke they don't move and the flow of qi will change and also when the, the flow of the qi changes actually the different organs when they affect the liver the liver will cause the irregular emotions which can be all kinds of different emotions that's also why for emotional problems for the treatments we always treat the liver we can either use the acupuncture points on the liver meridian go bladder meridian or the herbal medicine to smooth the liver the last aspect of the regulating qi movement promoting the reproduction in humans the reproduction in humans actually refers to female the egg the male the sperm so these storage and discharge are very closely related to the liver function because when the, the egg moves moves from the ovary to the uterus the movement that's the qi movement the qi move the eggs from the ovary to the uterus the, the discharge the movement or the discharge of the sperms are due to the flow of a qi that's why for the reproduction problems we always focus on the liver although there's another aspect that the kidney we're going to introduce in the next video because this, the kidney is in charge of the limitation so they should move but they should not move too much if they move too much they also cause a problem that's the qi movements so that's that's the the four aspects of the qi move of the regulating qi movements As you can see, although we mentioned the four aspects from the governs the flow of a qi, we actually the, the reason why the liver has so many functions on different areas can be the blood, can be the water metabolism, can be the digestive function, can be emotions, it can even relate it to the reproductions of humans. You see all these different areas different fields and functions since not related but all these functions behind all these functions behind all these signs and phenomena there's a one common laws they share that's all these functions is due to the qi movements Second function of the liver is the liver stores the blood. The liver stores blood. It means that the liver has the function of storing blood, regulating the volume of the blood in the body, and also can prevent bleeding. And the results of the liver stores the blood is the. the the result of storing liver qi here we need to think about the liver qi and the blood what's the relationship why stores the blood can store the liver qi that's actually from the the relationship between the blood and the qi the liver governs the qi movement 
level in in charge of the force the the circulation of the qi and then this qi needs something to limit the movement otherwise if you move too much cause bleeding and in this condition what can limit the level qi that's the blood because the the qi need to move the qi need a carrier of the blood this is a very we going to actually going to study this theories in the next chapters the essence of qi and blood the relationship between the qi and blood the blood is the carrier of a qi so when the liver stores the blood in the liver the liver qi also stores in the liver so you can control the flow of the qi in the body the second is regulating the volume of the blood in Huang Di Nei Jing, it described that when we lay, when we lie down, blood goes goes back to the liver. So this is the 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 liver is similar to the lake, and the blood circulation is very similar to the rivers. And if there's there there are floods, the water will store in the liver. And then if there are uh, there's drought, the water from the lake will goes to the river to support the water flow. So this is this is the situation or the relationship between the liver and the blood vessels or the liver and the blood circulation in the whole body. The certain amount of of the volume of the blood rely on the liver function so there will be not too much blood in the circulation the liver the, the blood in the liver also can nourish the liver itself also can nourish the eyes and ligaments these are the oritics and all the constituents of the liver the source of menstruation. The menstruation is the unmatured lady. The blood coming every every month, and this blood, where does the blood come from? It's from the liver, and also can prevent bleeding. The liver can stop bleeding. It's because the qi have the, the function to control the flow. So if it bleed, the qi can help to stop the bleeding because the qi will stop. That's the function of the qi to, to confine the movement. When we, when we study in future videos on the qi's function, you will study the you will know the functions of the qi what kind of function there so these are actually the function of the qi and the blood and also when the liver stores the blood on the heart the heart governs the blood the spleen and stomach you know, i said that from huang di nei jing we said the middle jaw received the the qi and then the qi goes goes to the heart the heart change from the qi into a red color this kind of a red color materials we call them blood so that's how the blood for me uh, transformed the heart governs the blood the middle jaw which are the spleen and stomach that's the source where the blood the, the resources where the blood come from and then the liver stores the blood so you can see here that the relationship of the blood meta, me, metabolism. If there is a question, how, what kind of, what, which, which organs are related to the blood formation and movement? So you need to describe in this way. 
from where the blood comes from, where it goes to where, it stores where, and what kinds of qi or which organs controls which function from which organs can help in which process. So that's what you need to study, what you, what you need to understand from these theories to explain our physiological condition of our human body. Also the prevent the prevention of bleeding. The spleen governs the the spleen controls the blood and I I said that's mostly from the bleeding at the lower part of the body, which is the the lower part of it, such as the blood the blood in urine, the blood stool, or the excess blood in menstruation. And then the liver can prevent the bleeding. This bleeding can refer to vomiting blood, coughing blood, also can be the excess blood in the in the menstruation. Because the function of these, how they prevent the bleeding is different for vomiting, for vomiting blood or for coughing blood is actually because of the qi movement in this situation the if the qi, the liver qi moves too, too fast or the excess qi, liver qi move, movements it will cause the blood from the vessels move out of the vessels that's because of the qi, the excess qi so in this condition, we think that the vomiting blood or coughing blood is the excess liver qi cause the bleeding. And then um, the bleeding in the urine or the stool is due to the spleen, lack of the function of controlled blood in the vessels. This is due to the qi deficiency of from the spleen. So one one of the bleeding is the qi move the blood too fast so the blood will move out of the vessels called bleeding the second the, the bleeding from the spring the qi is too weak so the qi could not control the blood within the vessels so the, the blood will move wherever they want to move which causes the bleeding so these two kinds of bleeding are different. That's why in our treatments we also use different kinds of treatments for these two kinds of bleeding. This is also exactly similar to the same diseases with different formulae of with different formula. That's, that's why you, you will see a lot of examples in our daily practice that for the same diseases we use different treatments. The reason why we use different treatments is because the, the causes of these diseases of different individuals are different. The relationship, anger, anger is as the emotion of the liver. So this, this emotion, the example is the one we gave you in the qi movements, such as the, when the anger, they feel hot feeling in the head. And hot feeding that's the function of a qi movement. So that's the emotion, the tears, the tears as the body fluids of the liver, and sinews as the body of constituents of the liver and nails as its splendor. So you can see the nails, you see the, the function of the, of the liver. For the tears, we're going to mention another clinical examples there. If sometimes the patient will tell you that they they tearing, especially in the morning when there's wind. So we cause when they we cause this kind of disease, we describe that this kind of diseases where wherever there there's wind to blow into their eyes, they tearing. 
So because of the tear, tears is the body fluid of the liver. So this kind of disease, tearing, we will use the, the treatments towards the, the liver. Or some stroke patient, or some belt palsy, that kind of patient. Sometimes the tearing. When the tearing, we, we will know that the tear is related to the liver. So in our treatments, we need to focus on the liver. Apart from other organs, which you, fo you already focus on, you need to focus on the liver as well. So th these are why we need to understand, we need to remember these body fluids or different parts of the body relate to which organs. In Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories, all diseases will root back to the five zhang organs. This is where the root is. The eyes as the orifice of the liver. So for poor eyesight or blurred eyesight, we can use the treatment to nourish the liver or any kinds of eyes problem, such as dry dryness in the eyes or eyes soreness, pains in the eyes. Apart from the visions, so anything related to the eyes, we will use the treatment towards the liver. The liver corresponds to the spring. The liver in the five elements is considered as the the wood and is considered and the spring also the wood. Why we said the liver corresponds to to the spring. So that's the the functions and characteristics of the liver. In the next video, we're going to introduce the kidney. Thank you, guys.